Hello and welcome back to the Sharks World, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be going over a rather interesting event that happened not too long ago, a few years ago, between a great white shark and a very weakened humpback whale. Now, the reason I want to go over this event in particular is because I see a lot of misinformation about this event, mainly coming from a lot of news articles that just look at a few headlines and just go with it from there. What I want to do here is go over the peer-reviewed article of the scientist and the researchers that witnessed the event directly and derive some points from there, including shark intelligence. So sit back, grab you a Celsius, and let's take a look at the first ever documented case of a great white shark attacking a live, albeit very weakened, humpback whale. Now a few little tidbits to go over before you begin. The actual event itself took place in 2017, and an article for it was published in January of 2020, so it was quite a bit of time and a lot of data gathered for it. And despite the fact that I'm going to be going over a lot of detail in regards to this article, I would still highly recommend that you give it a read. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description. So allow me to set up the scenario by first highlighting one of the things that a lot of news articles get incorrect which is that there were actually two great whites in this event, not just one. Both great whites were anywhere between 3.5 and 4 meters in length, or 11 and a half to 13 feet for you Americans out there, including me. Now the whale for reference is about seven meters or 23 feet. So in both cases, neither of them are the largest by any stretch of the imagination, but they're big enough. The encounter starts when a crew of about 15 are notified of a very weakened whale that is entangled in some rope off the coast of South Africa on February 17th of 2017. The whale was located at the point off of Mosel Bay in South Africa and the researchers sent out a research vessel to go and find the whale. After they found it, it was observed for about 30 minutes before the first white shark arrived, with the second one showing up about 40 minutes later. Now, when they arrived at the whale, a few things immediately became apparent to them, and it's that the whale's health was very, very poor. The rope was tied around both pectoral fins underneath the whale, and a second piece of rope was tied around the tail, with about two meters of it hanging behind it. On top of that, the whale's skin condition was very poor as well, with a large number of barnacles and whale lice all over the whale's body. In regards to the whale's behavior, it kept switching between resting at the surface and arching its body in an attempt to dive down, which I imagine the rope was hindering or preventing. Despite this, however, the whale's breathing was strong. And then the first shark showed up. The shark circled the whale several times for about two minutes, then it attacked. It bit the whale on its left side, right behind the pectoral fin. What's interesting, however, is that there was no typical predatory behavior, like it's rolling its eyes behind its socket. No, it just took a very big bite, let go, and backed off. Now, I wanna pause here for a moment to talk about this and how this pertains to shark intelligence, as well as to just predators in general. Normally in the wild, no great white shark in its right mind is going to attack a grown, healthy humpback whale. But as I stated, at the beginning of the encounter, it circled the whale several times. It was assessing whether or not it was worth the effort. All animals do this. See, he here's the thing. Animals don't ego challenge when it comes to the wild. It's not like in movies where the predator is taking on the biggest, baddest thing it can find. Predators want the path of least resistance. Let me use an example that's oftentimes shown in popular media by something that everybody loves, including me, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Whenever you look up a picture or see a video of Tyrannosaurus Rex hunting, it's often having this epic battle with Triceratops. Now, could T-Rex kill Triceratops? Yes, of course it could. However, what did it prefer? Hadrosaurs. If a T-Rex had to pick between a Triceratops and a Hadrosaur, it's gonna pick the Hadrosaur. Now, that's not to say that a Hadrosaur couldn't harm a T-Rex, but the chances of it harming T-Rex are far less likely than that of a Triceratops. Predators want the path of least resistance. They want to hunt the thing that's going to give them the highest success rate. This is why you see them hunt 
the weak, the young, and the inexperienced. Predators do not ego challenge like they are often shown in media. Ego and pride are not an animal trait. Survival and success rate are. Why I harp away on this point is because most people think whenever a shark attacks something, it's because they just decided to attack it on a whim. That's not the case. Whenever a shark goes after prey, it is thought out, it is calculated, and there is method to the madness. At the beginning of this encounter, the shark circled the whale several times for about two minutes. It was assessing the whale's condition to see if it was weak enough for the shark to potentially take advantage of it. After the shark bit it, it didn't remove a large amount of blubber or muscle. It just bit it and then it backed off. Then after that, a large amount of blood began to spill and start gushing out of the whale. The shark backed off and followed the whale for about 40 minutes. This shows another point of shark intelligence and method to the madness of when they hunt. It shows that sharks have a very clear understanding of how blood circulation and or blood flow works, even if it's on a basic level. The whale is clearly much bigger than the shark, but the shark was able to assess, this thing is bigger than me, so how do I take it down? Let me bite it and let it bleed out. This is oftentimes a hunting tactic that sharks use, but they use it on prey that's much smaller than them. So the fact that they implemented it on something bigger than them shows that they know what they're doing. So after about 40 minutes, the shark went and attacked a second time, this time under the tail. And once again, it didn't remove any large amount of blubber or muscle. It just bit it under the tail. Then when it started bleeding a lot, the shark backed off. Now, I imagine the shark was going to follow it again for an extended period of time. However, another challenger appeared. The second shark, the larger shark, the four meter long shark, just for you guys now. Now, here's where things get interesting. When the second shark showed up, it immediately went and attacked the whale in a similar area, right under the tail. Again, not removing any large amount of meat, just bit it once and backed off. The presence of this larger shark caused the first shark to back off. And by this point, this third bite from the shark and the second bite from the shark that has just left caused a large amount of blood to start spilling out from the whale. But shark toes, why do you call this interesting? A bigger shark just scared off a smaller shark. Yes, it did. But that's not why I call this interesting. Why I say it's interesting is because of what it implies with the arrival of the second shark and its hunting methods. Either A, it watched the first shark and implemented these similar hunting methods, which implies that it's able to learn from other sharks or by watching other animals, or B, it already knew this hunting method and came in and performed it. So here's the thing. Scientists often speculate that the younger sharks watch the older sharks and learn hunting methods from them. And that's part of the way they learn and learn to become so successful. But if the shark already knew this hunting method, that means it's done it before, or at least that's what it implies. So if it's A and sharks learn by watching others, how many other shark species learn from watching others? And if it's B, how often do white sharks do this on whales if the shark already knew the method? Just a little food for thought as you continue to explore the shark's world. But back to the encounter as we begin to reach the climax of this event. The second shark then began to approach the whale at the head. It circled it a bit and then it began to slowly get closer and closer as it approached the head and then it started to bump its head. This is where the shark is gaining more confidence as it can sense the whale's weakened state. By this point, there is a huge trail of blood behind the whale and its condition is getting worse and worse. The shark then approached the dorsal ridge on the tail stalk and bit the whale for the fourth and final time. This fourth bite was much more aggressive than the previous bites as it finally began to shake its head. This time it was very clear this was an attempt to push the whale under. Now, like the other bites, it didn't remove any significant amount of meat, just causing a lot of blood. But now the shark was trying to drown the whale and the shark was successful. At 3.42 p.m., three minutes after the fourth and final bite, the whale finally sank and didn't come back up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the encounter ended. Quite eventful, wouldn't you 
agree. This article reinforces why I believe sharks are far smarter than people would give them credit for. Despite the fact that the humpback whale was rather weak, when the shark hunted it, there was a very clear method to the madness. In the article, it highlights sections where other sharks have done this as well. There's parts where it shows dusky sharks hunting humpback whales, and even it highlights that in 2002, apparently some bull sharks took down a live blue whale by attacking with the tail and the throat, causing very intensive bleeding, which implies that other sharks employ similar hunting methods, which begs the question, how did they learn this method? Let it be known that I will definitely be searching the internet to find an article talking about that event. If any of you happen to find it before I do, please send it my way. I will happily take a look at it and do a breakdown video of it. But that's all from me for now. Thank you for once again giving me some of your time, and I'll see you on your next visit to the Sharks World. Until next time.